All right, no revelation study today because I did each letter individually. It ended on column two. Today is column one day. So I'll just bypass a day and we'll catch up. I like for my, I, I do them by my dad's old Bible. And of course there's two columns on each page. And I keep track of where I'm at. Like Thursday, we'll be on column two, column three, column four, flip the page back to column one, two. So, and column two won't be much for Revelation. It'll only be about two thirds the column. But then at least we'll be caught up. They'll be synced. So I know I like both studies to be on the same column. So when I open my bookmark, I know to go to column two on both so I don't get confused. That's all. So today we're just going to do Acts. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch. Ooh, I need to flip the page. We've already done this one. Yeah, we did. Golly. Yes, sorry. So we are, we are, we are, we are, we are. Nine. See, I was able to flip right to the page, the bookmark. 936, 43, boom, boom, boom. We finish Acts 9. Now, there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom, when they had washed, they laid her upon in an upper chamber. Excuse me. And for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent him un they sent unto him two men, desiring him that they would not delay to come see them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the supper chamber, and all the widows stood by him, weeping and showing their coats and garments, which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. Now, when Jesus rose people from the dead, or when the apostles, who are only the ones capable of healing and raising from the dead, and this was the only time that they, they spoke in other languages, which is called tongues, which the babble that people do today in churches or did or whatever was garbage. It's not real. It's not biblical. This was all done by the uh, first century apostles that were with Jesus because they had, they had the ability to perform as Jesus performed. So raising somebody from the dead is just a parallel for how the Holy Spirit moving forward raises us from being dead in our sins and calls us out of the world and beats the world out of us. It's a beating. He locks us down and beats us. It's a chastening and scourging process straight out of Romans 12, 6 through 8, which says, for whom the Lord loveth, which he loves his sheep, he will chasten and scourge each one of them and, you know, at their appointed time. So that's uh, Hebrews 12, 6 through 8, if you ever want to read it. And so that's what it's a parallel of. Uh, leprosy was a form of sin. So curing somebody of leprosy is curing them from their sins, uh, giving the blind the ability to see or the, the deaf the ability to hear for the dumb, the ability to speak. That is, the Lord provides us with eyes to see and ears to hear the truth, and then the ability to speak the truth. That's all that the healings were, were parallels to how he heals our bodies spiritually in the way. And turning him to the body said, or else, look, I mean, why does God have somebody die only to then have them raised? Couldn't God have just not appointed them to die? But this was not only to show people the power 
back then. But again, it's a parallel. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up and he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her as being alive. And it was known throughout all of Joppa and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon, a tanner. Now, what we'll do is we will read this again in the New Living since we don't have... A Revelation study today. Our second study will be the exact same study, just in the different translation. There was a believer in Joppa named Tabitha, which in the Greek is Dorcas. She was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor. About this time, she became ill and died. Her body was washed for burial and laid in an upstairs room. But the believers had heard that Peter was nearby in Lydda, so they sent two men to beg him to please come as soon as possible. So Peter returned with them, and as soon as he arrived, he, they took him upstairs to the room. The room was filled with widows who were weeping and showing him the coats and other clothes Dorcas had made for them. But Peter asked them to all leave the room. And then he knelt and prayed, turning to the body. He said, get up, Tabitha. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and he helped her up. And then he called in the widows and all the believers. And he presented her to them alive. The news spread throughout the whole town. And many believed in the Lord. And Peter stayed a long time in Joppa, living with Simon, a tanner of hides. So these people believe because they were called to believe. It wasn't just because they saw it and they made a free will decision. The Lord had planned for them to see it. And then the Lord called them in their heart to believe. All right. Love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.